Okay, one more problem we're going to do with the limit process. This one's going to be involving a rational expression and we have a square on the bottom. Here's our formula for the derivative. We're going to plug things in. We want to find f of x plus h and also f of x. Okay, so first we're going to do f of x plus h. x plus h is going to go on the bottom one in place of x. So we're going to do 1 over x plus h squared and then minus f of x. f of x is given as 1 over x squared. So we'll put that in and have an h in the bottom. So we're just filling in for each of the steps there. You want to find common denominators next. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply each one by what it's missing. The common denominator will be both of these together. We're going to multiply top and bottom by x squared over x squared. The other one has the x squared, but we're missing x plus h squared, top and bottom. And then down below we still have the h. We want to write this together as a single denominator. So that's going to be x squared minus x plus h squared. On the bottom I have x squared times x plus h squared, and I have h down below. So question is, do I need to multiply the bottom one? No, you actually don't have to. You can actually leave it together. It's going to be a lot easier if you just leave it together in the factor form because eventually we're going to be putting in a zero for h anyway, which that part's going to be made easier. So for right now, I'm not going to worry about doing that. I have an h over 1, which I'm going to flip the fraction, and the h is going to end up on the bottom. So I'll do couple steps at once. First of all, the h is going to end up on the bottom there, and I'm going to end up with uh, this. So again, what I did, I took the top fraction, multiplied by 1 over h, the h ends up on the bottom there. Then, I need to simplify this top part. I have x squared minus, and then I'm going to foil out x plus h squared, and if I do that, I'll get this one here. And then I need to do some simplifying. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to distribute the minus sign through. So I'm going to do, that's a minus. This is going to be a minus. And this is a minus. Don't forget to do that part. That part is elementary, but it's very, very important because if you don't distribute the minus signs, you're not going to get the correct answer. So you've got to make sure that you're subtracting everything through. That's going to allow you to cancel out these x's. Then what you can do is with the remaining part you can pull out an h. So we're going to factor out an h there. We get negative 2x minus h down below. We have the same thing. And now we have an h that we can cancel so that way again we're no longer worrying about division by zero happening. So what, I, what I'm left with is expression I actually don't need to limit anymore because I'm just going to plug in zeros now. Since the h's are gone, I can now get the answer by plugging in zeros. So I'm going to do negative 2x minus 0. On the bottom I have x squared times x plus 0. And then on top I'll get negative 2x. On the bottom I have x squared times x squared. This means I can write that as negative 2x over x to the fourth. Finally, I can write my answer for the derivative. Negative 2 over x cubed. That's going to be my final answer here because I did that. I just subtracted the power. The x is here. Reduced that. So negative 2 over x cubed. It's the final answer.